Let's talk about transmission line speakers and what I mean by the transmission line trap. Uh, it's not a trap. It's not like a, a bass trap or anything like that. It's a trap that speaker builders, do it yourself, speaker builders fall into where they want to, you know, try to build a transmission line speaker. They've done the sealed, they've done the vented, they've done the horn even maybe. And they want to try this because it's like almost like the holy grail of speaker designs, the transmission line. And if you're not familiar with how it works, it's at its simplest, it's a uh, woofer at the end of a pipe, basically. Usually a mid woofer is the driver that's used, so it doesn't just cover the lower frequencies. And the length of the pipe is uh, determined by the Usually you use the um, resonant frequency of the driver, okay? So on a typical six and a half, maybe it's 40. So you'll make your pipe the quarter wavelength of that. And what that does is it takes the output from the back of the driver and puts it through that pipe so that when it comes out the other end of the pipe, it's in phase with what you're getting from the front of the speaker. And that's basically it for um, transmission line speakers. Now, what they're supposed to emulate is the infinite baffle. Here in my listening room, my subwoofers are an infinite baffle arrangement where they're in the wall, the end wall of the room, the front wall of the room, but the back of them opens onto another room that's on back of this room. And that's called infinite baffle, although it's not really 100% there because what's happening in that back room actually does kind of get back here as well. The idea behind infinite baffle is that you get the, the front wave of the speaker only, and it's not affected by the back wave from cancellation. And transmission line speakers, or at least the ideal version of a transmission line speaker, which I don't think it's been built yet, completely eats that back wave. It completely consumes it. There's nothing left of it. So even if the pipe is open on the end, there's nothing left to come out. It's been all absorbed by the line. Okay, it's, it's absorbed by stuffing or damping inside the line. And so that's a crucial component of a transmission line speaker is the damping that you put inside the line. In <clears throat> the less perfect version, you're looking to smooth out the ripples that are caused by this pipe, the pipe resonances you'll get when you put a speaker on one end of a pipe, you're gonna get a lot of pipe resonances and that'll be ripples in the response. You wanna damp those as much as you possibly can, but still maintain enough of that lower range output to come out the end to augment what you're hearing from the front of the speaker. Because that's probably the most realistic implementation for a transmission line, where it takes the back wave and it um, takes out all the ripples and stuff like that but leaves enough of the low end, which you're gonna get more of because it's contained inside this uh, pipe to add to the front wave and you're hearing both combined. It's very similar in, in principle to a, uh, to a uh, vented box or a porta box, but the thing about a porta box is that you're actually letting the box resonate. The box is resonate, the port is resonating, and that'll give you your, your low end reinforcement that you're getting from the ported system. This doesn't do that. It tries to, it tries to get rid of those resonances that you'll have in any kind of a port or tube and just use the energy that's coming from the back of the woofer and redirects it through this pipe and it comes out in phase with the front and therefore they add together and you get deeper bass response. So that's all well and good, you're saying, well, what's the trap? What are you talking about trap? Well, I mean, for the do-it-yourself speaker builder, it's kind of something that they wanted to try to do. I know I did. I made two. The first one was, uh, was pretty much a guesswork. You know, I was going by the uh, resonant frequency of the driver and I made the pipe, you could say, that length, and I put it inside a box that was, 
really uh, kind of complicated. What I had in mind when I was designing this was one of the Wilson Audio speakers of the time, except with more curves, more um, graceful looking. And I spent a lot of time working on that. And eventually I made it a new pair, and you can see that in this picture as well. That's the ones with the curved front baffle that's more rectangular. And I was more happy with those. I liked the way they sounded better. So I took the drivers out of the old one and I actually threw away the boxes. So they're not around anymore. They went to the dump. And I kind of regret that. Although when I built them, I wasn't very careful about how I was doing things. I made them from um, scrap plywood that wasn't very good. And then I attempted to give them a piano black finish which kind of failed <laughs> because I kept adding body filler to, to smooth it out and, and layers of paint and then body filler and spot putty. And I still couldn't get it really smooth. Eventually what I wound up doing was um, painting them a matte black color and they look pretty good like that. And I, I kept them for a couple of years uh, like that and using them and they sounded good. Don't get me wrong. It's just, you know, my thing is I like building speakers. So I had to move on to another pair. And the new pair, of course, would have to replace the old pair. But a few years later, of course, I fell into the transmission line trap again, and I built a small pair that were the rear surround speakers for my home theater system I had in my old house before I abandoned the home theater idea and just went to two-channel listening. And those were a small box with a small VIFA 4-inch driver and the line wasn't very long of course because the resonant frequency of the driver was around 90 or maybe 100 and they were just rear surrounds they sounded okay for what they were it's just way more complex than they need to be and that is the thing that is the trap about the transmission line speaker it's more complex than it really needs to be to get something similar some would say there's a big difference. I, I had I didn't hear it. Now, I guess those people would probably say, well, you never built a proper transmission line, which I don't know, can be said and can't be. The second pair of the smaller ones, uh, I used uh, Martin King's MathCAD models to to model those before I actually built them. So and I tested them afterwards and they 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 actually measured the same as the MathCAD models predicted. So those were a proper transmission line speaker. But if I had not made the same thing with uh, Vented, I don't think I could have heard a difference. That's the thing. That's the trap. Vented is way simpler, way easier to, to design, way more forgiving also of um, like box size and port length and stuffing inside the box because all these things will change the tuning frequency. All of that is more forgiving with a ported design than it will be with a transmission line, which is kind of finicky. You have to get the uh, the line length correct, plus the line taper. It's, it tapers. It's supposed to taper. Uh, although my first pair didn't. <laughs> I mean, it got bigger and smaller in places. But it tapers, and that's supposed to be, you know, one-third the driver. Okay, you go to full driver uh, diameter to begin with down to one third or one quarter. And then the, the uh, length needs to be calculated properly for the correct frequency. And then when you put stuffing in there, when you put uh, the damping material in there, that will change that. When you put damping inside any enclosed space, it makes that enclosed space seem bigger as far as sound is concerned. It makes that line seem longer or bigger or wider. So it's really a balancing act there to get that right. and that's the reason why it's more complex. Also, you need a way bigger box, all right? And you need to add all these baffles inside to, you know, make your transmission line. So in my opinion, <laughs> even though I would like to build a new pair because it's kind of a challenge, it's not worth it because it's too complex and too unpredictable.